Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6000-2. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The following two file revisions were found in the SCP-6000 slot when it was automatically pregenerated as an empty placeholder by Synet on June 25, 2022. No file history was available. Due to the content therein and the questionable circumstances of its discovery, the O5 Council has elected to leave this file unaltered. None of the events that follow have occurred in baseline reality. The coordinates listed as the location of SCP-6000 contain nothing of note. Maria Jones, Director, Racer. Narrating document SCP-6000 Revision 0894 February 2, 8, 2030, Project Fusillade. Item number, SCP-6000. Object Class, Apollyon. Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-6000 has failed. All Foundation slash Fusillade personnel left on Earth should report to their site's HMCL supervisor to receive further instructions. Description SCP-6000 is the section of the Earth that has been transformed into a section of the extra-dimensional location known as the Wanderer's Library. Currently, SCP-6000 covers the entirety of the Western Hemisphere and is increasing in size. SCP-6000's transformation began in the, the Amazon Basin in South America and continued across the entire hemisphere in the following weeks, despite Joint Foundation GOC efforts under the Project Fusilade banner to impede its progress. All population centers, Foundation, GOC and fusillade sites inside SCP-6000 are considered lost. The veil protocol is to be disregarded. Currently, containment of SCP-6000 involves evacuating fusillade personnel to designated extra-dimensional backup sites. SCP-6000 covers 58% of the Earth's surface and is actively growing. Projections indicate it will cover the entire planet within two and two and a half weeks. Addendum 6000.1 Final Log The following was the final audio log recorded and broadcast from Facility 57 before it was completely subsumed into SCP-6000. While it was believed all personnel and useful anomalies had been evacuated, Investigation revealed that Director Moose had never boarded any of the evacuation choppers in the chaos. After this audio file's recording, both figures disappeared from Facility 57's biometric scanners. Seconds later, the facility was subsumed by SCP-6000. An excerpt. So, what happens now? What do you mean? We wait. What else is there to do? Nothing, I suppose. We wait. Then what are you worried about? I'm not sure. Silence. You really shouldn't worry, you know. And why is that? Leaving this world is not as scary as it sounds. I think you're understating what's about to happen. What's about to happen, then? This is what always happens. This is natural. No. To hell with that, there's nothing natural about this. The world is being eaten alive. We're sitting and watching the apocalypse and we can't do anything about it. Silence. Do you think there's going to be anything after this? I don't believe in God, if that's what you're asking. Anyone who works at the Foundation and still believes in God has more faith than the Pope. That's not what I'm asking. What do you think is going to happen after the way covers the world? There's just going to be nothing? Of course. It's subsuming the world, replacing it. That's where you're wrong. What? SCP-600-A lights a cigarette with her finger. I don't understand, Director. You know, on a logical level, that the sun is going to burn out one day. 
you go through every day of your life, through the motions, knowing that there is a shelf life on the universe. There is always an ending. Yeah, but those... Are natural? The slow, agonizing heat death of the universe, watching every star go dark one by one as they no longer find themselves capable of exploding into existence, what makes that more natural than this? This has always been the Foundation's fatal flaw. An inability to adapt and survive. That changes nothing. It changes everything, Tilda. We all live and work knowing nothing goes on forever. But we don't let knowing there is an end ruin the story for us. And here's the part that matters. There are always more stories. I don't understand. The library is all stories. Where there was once one story, about a foundation and their valiant stand down with the end of the world, there will be a thousand million new stories, and a thousand million new worlds inside them. Silence. The library doesn't just connect all worlds. It is all worlds. Every world a story, every story a world, and everything that matters. So it's not out of control. This is the end of the story, and we're becoming part of the library. I suppose you could put it that way. Didn't you want to visit the library again? You seemed like you missed it. Agent McMillan certainly did. Silence. Now come on. Unlock these handcuffs. You don't want to miss the end of the world, do you? Silence. What? So. What, nothing I or Adam or anyone could have done would have stopped it. It was pointless. Sighing, the point was the same thing that it's ever been. To make new stories where there was once nothing. Be happy, Tilda. Your story is going to be remembered forever. What if? What if I don't want new stories? You think people will read about us? End log. The following dialogue has been secured from the Wanderer's Library. SCP-6000-A smiled a snake-like laugh and waggled a finger at her through its handcuffs. Director, we've been over this. You don't get to pick the ending of the story. She looked down. But you do get to pick how you decide to take it. You can sit down and weep that the old stories you grew to love are gone. Or you can smile and move on to the next shelf. She looked back up. They weren't in holding cell B918 anymore. They were standing between two gargantuan bookshelves that seemed to go on forever before suddenly diverging into more bookshelves. Every space was filled with the spine of a different book, massive tomes to paper-thin leaflets. There were people of all shapes and sizes in robes sitting here and there, perusing the collection. The sky was a black void dotted with constellations, she could smell the scent of fresh paper. Welcome home, Jayla. SCP-600-A was gone. In its place was a young Asian woman, maybe five feet tall, with a tattoo of a snake wrapped around a wrist on her face. She found her voice again. How? I've been telling you. The library is the end of your story, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Because you get to move on to the next story. She gestured around her, and a few of the other patrons looked up. A few shrugged off their hoods. Adam. And Vasquez and Kurtz and Bardem and Flores too. She even thought she saw some of the O5S in the crowd. The end isn't death, Tilly. You were stubbornly clinging to that idea for so long. There'll be new stories. More worlds, with the Foundation. With me. Everything we fought for. Everything we did. There already are. So. She reached over and pulled out a book with a soft, gray cover. The front was embossed with SCP-6000 in ornate lettering. Get to reading. She looked around at the impossibly huge library. In the distance, she spotted the same giant insect that had greeted her when the fire team first went in. It waved a pincer at her. I think this is it. This is what? My happy ending. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did, please subscribe, like, and share it around. 
If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.